Coming up on Citrus TV News, a car crashed into a dorm this morning. Find out how the students sleeping inside the room reacted. And Remembrance Week continues tonight with the celebration of life. Our own Katie Lane will be live inside Slocum Auditorium with a preview of the event. Bird Library has items from the Pan Am Flight 103 archives on display today. We'll give you an inside look at what the archives have to offer. Citrus TV News starts right now. This is Citrus TV News Live at 6, your campus news leader. Two students have been forced to move from Walnut Hall after a car crashed into the side of their dorm room this morning. Good evening, I'm Connor White. And I'm Gabrielle Caracciolo. According to the students, a car came loose from a tow truck on Marshall Street and shattered the window. The car was gone by the time Citrus TV arrived on the scene, but you can see the damage left over from the incident. The students say facility services arrived quickly to clean up the mess. One of the students was asleep at the time of the incident. He says he wasn't sure exactly what had happened. 11 in the morning and I was like just starting to get up and everything like that for my classes and I heard a massive shatter and like a crash basically and I looked up and I saw my Brita was across the room completely shattered my fan was on the ground and I was like oh no my stuff fell and broke and I looked up and there was a car in my window and there's just glass all over the floor completely from the window all over my desk and all my stuff from uh, the car crash basically. His roommate was away at the time. When he heard the news, his main concern was everyone's safety. Yeah, I, that's what I'm more concerned about, the fact that everyone's okay. You know, there's n no one's hurt, nothing's significantly damaged. Citrus TV reached out to SU Student Life for comment, but they have not yet responded. Continue to follow Citrus TV for the information as it develops. Remembrance Week continues today with a celebration of life performance. The event will honor the Pan Am Flight 103 victims through the artistic talents of current scholars and students. Citrus TV's Katie Lane is live in Slocum Auditorium where the celebration will take place. Katie, what can students expect to see later tonight? Connor, students and staff will expect that happens. I think a lot of the other events we have, we're having panels on terrorism, both on cyber terrorism and American terrorism. We're having the Rose Lang ceremony, which is a somber event that sort of, again, focuses on the, vic on the victims as victims of terrorism and not as people. And I think celebration of life because it's art. It's not that it's necessarily a livelier event, but I think it does focus on them as people. And our 35 is students who had interest and passions, not just 35 that were lost celebration of life allows people to grieve in a different way. Smith says for her, art is a form of healing. For me right now, I'm just like super excited to see it. I think I, I am an artistic person, I'm an acting major, and so the way I process, the way I heal, the way I express myself all falls in that artistic realm. Thanks, Katie. We apologize for the technical difficulties. Remembrance Week continues tomorrow with the annual rose laying ceremony. And after uh, the success of yesterday's Mirror Me exhibit in Bird Library, the Remembrance Scholars decided to continue the display for a few hours this morning, this time on the quad. The 35 mirrors represent each of the SU victims of the attack. The goal is to show that the lives of students today are not that different from 31 years ago. I'm one of the scholars this year representing Mark Lawrence Tobin. On his mirror and each of the others, there was a QR code for people to scan on their phones. It took you to the Remembrance Archives website where you would learn that he was a senior at Fordham University studying in London through SU with dreams of becoming a sportscaster. And while you can check out the online archives anytime, selections from the Pan Am Flight 103 Lockerbie Air Disaster Archives were available to view in Bird Library this afternoon. The Open Archives exhibit invited members of the campus and community to learn more about the tragedy. There are collections for each of the 35 SU victims of the bombing as well as materials on the Lockerbie community. As we mentioned, each year 35 SU students take on the role of Remembrance Scholar. This year, one of them is making history. Citrus TV's Lilia Wood spoke to the scholar that is helping to pave the way for a more inclusive group of Remembrance Scholars. This week has been emotional for Remembrance Scholars, embodying the 35 students whose lives were lost on Pan Am Flight 103 over 30 years ago. Some of us were 
crying when we hear the bell ring like 35 times. Scholar Cleo Hamilton is representing Eric Coker, whose twin was also killed in the bombing. I would say like for Eric, I want to like show him some honor to look back and act forward of his memory. Yet Cleo is doing even more than that. He's paving the way for diversity. He is the first Inclusive U member chosen as a Remembrance Scholar. I feel great when last April I got the email notification that I have been selected as a Remembrance Scholar. Inclusive U is a program on campus that gives students with intellectual and developmental disabilities a college experience. Cleo is studying sports management at the Falk College of Sports and Human Dynamics. First I'm going to say like first I'm gonna say inclusive view, like um cause, cause I know one of our juniors, like if they wanna have the opportunity to be the next Romero Scholar, um, they'll like fill up the application in, in January, which is next year. Cleo's looking forward to meeting the Coker family tomorrow and learning more about who he was. Um, I never met his family before, um, cause I really want to meet them when when they like come to the Rose Lane ceremony. The Rose ceremony will be taking place tomorrow afternoon at the Place of Remembrance. Lilia Wood, Citrus TV News. Our coverage of Remembrance Week continues tomorrow with our live stream of the Rose Lane ceremony, which starts at 2 p.m. The campus community is celebrating Diwali today. Diwali is the five-day festival of light celebrated by Hindu, Sikhs, Johns, and some Buddhists. You can see the full list of events there on your screen. Light Up the Orange Grove is happening right outside Bound Hall until 6.30, followed by celebrations in Schaefer Art Building and the illuminations in the Orange Grove. A memorial service for Will Georges will be held this Saturday from 1 to 3 in Hendricks Chapel's Noble Room. Georges was a student in the College of Arts and Sciences working on his MFA in creative writing. He died in April. Students and faculty will read poems of his and poems that he loved at the service. It's Domestic and Dating Violence Awareness Month, and in just under an hour, there will be a candlelight vigil outside Hendricks Chapel. The event will honor individuals that have lost their lives to domestic violence. It will be co-hosted by Hendricks Chapel, the Barn Center at the Arch, and Omega Phi Beta. Two SU students have claimed the top prize in the American Heart Association Business Accelerator Competition. Engineering major Russell Fearman. Uh, excuse me, and, ma and design major Ricardo Sanchez won the $50,000 prize after creating a watch that is designed to help people with diabetes. Fearon is diabetic himself and wanted to find an easier way for people to test their blood sugar levels. The watch replaces typical testing equipment, which Fearon said was awkward to carry around. Now, Gabrielle, that is a pretty impressive story. Always nice Definitely. to have some good news. And part of the good news we've had this week is the weather. Other than a few spotty skies on Tuesday, we've had some pretty beautiful fall weather. It was absolutely gorgeous out, but we have weather anchor or Sunny Balkan in studio to let us know if that weather is going to stick around. Sunny? Thanks, guys. I have some good news and some bad news. It's cloudy right now. It's not going to be cloudy tomorrow, but the bad news is that it's not going to be sun. That's right. The temperatures right now are slightly above average, partly cloudy with some moderate humidity, but tomorrow it's not really looking any better. We're actually getting some rain in the afternoon, so we're going to have mostly cloudy throughout the day. The chance of rain as the day continues, and on top of that, the humidity is going to remain pretty moderate. It's a little sticky out, a little rainy, not what you want to see as we're getting into wintertime. You want to start to see those colder temperatures. Hopefully, I'll be able to tell you a bit more about that later in my full weather forecast. But for now, let's take a look at the CNY current temperatures. You got 50s across the board. It's pretty moderate out there right now. Nothing too bad. There's a slight breeze, and I'll talk more about that later. And there's pretty good weather variation in Syracuse right now. It's cloudy, but in Rochester, Penyon, Elmira, they're actually seeing some sun. So maybe later on in the week, we'll get some of that too. I'll tell you more about that in my full weather forecast. Thanks, Sonny. New details in the murder of 12-year-old James Springer. Lawyers say Johnson Pizarro may face up to five years in prison for an unrelated weapons charge. Pizarro was found not guilty on Tuesday for the murder of Springer due to lack of video evidence. Springer was killed after someone shot multiple times into the Syracuse home last October. The Empire Farm Brewery in Casanova is continuing operations despite filing for bankruptcy. At an auction on Monday, owner David Katletsky agreed to sell his company to DeWitt-based Feldheimer Equipment for $3.4 million. The final sale is set to close by October 31st, but if it doesn't, Empire is once again up for grabs. 
And a big upgrade is coming to the Landmark Theater. Assemblyman William Magnarelli secured a $2 million grant to upgrade seating and fix the marquee. The seats are from the 1920s and don't provide enough space for audiences or people with disabilities. The marquee is also from the 1920s and has been damaged in recent years. Both projects are expected to be completed by the summer of 2020. Blaze Pizza is continuing to expand in upstate New York. They have opened a new location in New Hartford. The company is offering free 11-inch pizzas today for anyone who visits the New Hartford location and downloads their mobile app. Blaze Pizza opening, opened their first Syracuse location on Erie Boulevard in DeWitt earlier this year. They are planning to add another location near Syracuse University in the Marshall early next year. Coming up, Representative Alex Mooney is in hot water after releasing a phone call on Twitter from the deposition yesterday. Hear what was said on the call. Plus, President Trump plans to implement a new agreement to limit migrants from Guatemala. We've got the details of the agreement when Citrus TV News returns. Leaving hot coals improperly extinguished can cause a wildfire. Hey guys, it's Smokey! It looks as if Smokey is going to use the drown, stir, drown and feel technique after the first drown. A good start. Next, another drink. And finally, a close feel. Is it cool? cool. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Smokey, catch. Oh, my bad, Smokey. Only you can prevent wildfires. You're watching Citrus TV News with Connor White, Gabrielle Caraccio. <clears throat> hey, Hard, what's this? That's my resignation letter. You're resigning. Why? Because you're constantly ignoring me. You're half as active as you used to be, and you get stuff like this. Uh, good morning. This is Congressman Alex Mooney. I'm calling you live from the skiff. <clears throat> hey, Hard, what's this? That's my resignation letter. You're resigning. Why? Because you're constantly ignoring me. You're half as active as you used to be, and you get stuff like this. You've been putting me under a lot of pressure lately. That's why I'm ready to quit. I, I forgot. I'll, I'll do better. Please, don't quit on me. OK, but remember, it's not what you say. It's what you do. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Let's go for a walk. Uncontrolled high blood pressure could lead to a stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too late. Watching Citrus TV News with Connor White, Gabrielle Caracciolo, Sonny Balkin, and Katie Lane. Citrus TV News, your campus news leader. Uh, good morning. This is Congressman Alex Mooney. I'm calling you live from the skiff. It is precisely 1.22 p.m. West Virginia lawmaker Alex Mooney tweeted out that audio after he and other House GOP members stormed the closed-door deposition about the impeachment inquiry into President Trump. In his phone call from the sensitive compartmented information facility, Mooney claimed that Democrats lacked transparency. The moment we walked in the room, Chairman Adam Schiff saw us, took the witness, and walked out of the room because they refused to have a hearing in a transparent way. It's important to note that the SCIF strictly prohibits cell phone use, and some believe Mooney committed a federal crime. Hundreds have been evacuated in Northern California today as a wildfire grew larger in the region. The state is cutting off electricity to the area to try to prevent more fires that could be fueled by high winds. Authorities urged all 900 residents of Gracerville to evacuate. The fire began on Wednesday morning, but authorities have not yet determined a cause. President Donald Trump will soon implement an agreement with Guatemala limiting who is eligible for asylum in the United States. The agreement seeks to reduce the inflow of asylum seekers into the U.S. and commits Guatemala to extend asylum to those in need. Once the plan is put into place, Trump intends to relocate asylum seekers in the U.S. to Guatemala. Unaccompanied children and people with medical issues won't, however, be relocated. Homeland Security informed lawmakers that the agreement is nearly complete but did not give word on when it will actually go into effect. And Kurdish forces are accusing Turkey of launching an attack in northeastern Syria today. This comes in violation of the ceasefire agreement between the two groups from earlier this week. 
Yesterday, the U.S. lifted sanctions on Turkey after they agreed to make the ceasefire long term. And on Tuesday, Russian President Putin met with Turkish President Erdogan to decide a plan to patrol the northern border with Syria. They also agreed that the U.S. should have no part in determining Syria's future. And the latest from the UK, British police have confirmed that the 39 people found dead in a truck in southeast England were all Chinese citizens. The Essex police force reports that 31 men and 8 women found in the truck of an industrial park east of London came from Belgium in a container separate from the truck. The truck driver from Northern Ireland has been taken into custody for questioning. Coming up after the break, weather anchor Sunny Balkan will tell you what you can expect for this weekend. And is Area 51 the home to alien life? Well, one man claims to have the answer. We'll be right back. told me a bottle couldn't dream. That I would never become a superhero. But I learned how to fly. Just to come back in a new disguise. And be the hero that I've always wanted to be. If you see news happening on campus, in Syracuse, or across the nation, call the Citrus TV Newsroom, 315-443-1177, or tweet at Citrus TV News, your campus news leader. From the Citrus TV Weather Center, this is SU's most accurate weather forecast. <laughs> And we're back, guys, with more weather. Honestly, I'd like to say the best weather, but it is not the best weather. As you can see right here, we have a lot of wind actually coming up towards going through Syracuse towards Tarasoga, Saratoga Springs. Now, all of that wind is channeling through Syracuse, and with it, it's bringing a lot of damp air. That damp air is creating a lot of sort of clouds and precipitation that is going to lead to a pretty rainy week as we're going to see later. Now, ignoring the fact that there might be some rain, let's take a look at what's currently going on. Now, we're in the clear for now. This is currently all of the Northeast, and you can see that there is some rain towards Maine and Massachusetts. Massachusetts area, but for the most part, we're not getting any in New York, which is kind of nice. That's going to change as the week goes on. But for right now into the evening, we should have a pretty clear sky. So if you're going out and you're studying, you could know that you don't need to bring a raincoat. You're going to be just fine. Going over for that, going back towards the wind, we can now see that the outdoor activity outlook is at a moderate, but there's really no surprise there because it's not going to be a particularly nice week. Sadly, it's mostly cloudy skies with a little bit of rain, some showers scattered throughout the week. We're going to see them a bit in the weekend sometime on Saturday, sometime tomorrow in the evening. Temperatures in the high 50s to mid 60s later as the week goes on. So we're seeing a lot of rainy, a lot of moderate temperatures. That humidity is going to be pretty thick as we get into the weekend. Now let's look at the weekly weather forecast. Despite the fact that there's a lot of rain and a lot of clouds, which we can't deny it is National Pumpkin Day on Saturday. So it's not supposed to rain on Saturday, which is kind of nice. You can just take a light jacket with you, go out to the pumpkin orchards, get some, carve some. It'll be a pretty nice Saturday to do that. Sunday, however, we are going to be seeing some storms that'll clear up on Monday and Tuesday. We shouldn't see as much, but for the most part, you'll have a lovely Saturday, a so-so Sunday, and a pretty okay Monday and Tuesday. Thanks so much, guys. Coming up in 
Thanks, Sonny. Don't take my bet. Coming up in sports, Syracuse might be without Tommy DeVito this weekend, so what should you expect if he can't play? Plus the shocking result from Game 2 of the World Series. Stay with us. This is the story of a boy who didn't talk for a long time. I have never done that before in a my whole life. To always I, be I, the I same. Any changes would scare and upset him. The unknown was an unfriendly place. The boy was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where they couldn't get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. He wasn't trying to be mean, it just made him feel uncomfortable. Sometimes he would flap his arms again and again. One day I found out I have something called autism. My family got me help. Slowly I found my voice and learned all the ways I could live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. We're gonna go out there in the rain. We're gonna get wet. All right, here we go. Yeah. Go on, Ryan. Oh, we're gonna get wet. Oh, we're gonna get wet. Okay, quick. Oh, yeah. Yes. So much fun. Yeah, Dad. We're getting so wet. I see you mobbing over her. Let's go. Let's mob. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Hey, yo, we mobbing. Come on, girl. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Hey, yo, let's crawl. Hey, yo, let's crawl. Hey, let's crawl. Hey, yo, let's crawl. And now, your Citrus TV Sports Report. Syracuse football has some questions at quarterback heading into its matchup with Florida State. Good evening, I'm Brandon Ross. Starter Tommy DeVito went down against Pitt last week and he didn't return. So if he's not ready to go, the Orange will likely turn to redshirt senior Clayton Welch. The former walk-on threw his first two career touchdown passes in relief last Friday. So if Welch has to line up under center in Tallahassee, his teammates know they have someone they can trust. And no one knows that more than Todd Harris. Clayton is a baller. He's a playmaker, you know. As you can see, he made plays, but he's definitely, I mean, we, I see that practicing with him every day, going against the defense. He's just a, a dog. He got the dog mentality. Or DeVito starting this weekend, either could be in for a big day. The Seminoles have allowed more than 290 passing yards per game this season. That makes them the ninth worst pass defense in the country. We'll find out if Syracuse can launch a successful air attack when action kicks off on Saturday at 3.30. And as SU football looks for its first ACC win this weekend, the women's soccer team hopes to earn its second tonight. The 3-9-2 Syracuse squad is in Raleigh taking on an NC State team that has also struggled lately. The Wolfpack has only one win in its last seven games, and NC State will turn to leading goal scorer Zierra King to get things rolling. Meanwhile, watch for SU to lean on goalkeeper Lizzie Ann Pruel. Game time at Dale Soccer Field is scheduled for seven. And Syracuse men's basketball will see a familiar face running the opposing sideline when the Orange face Niagara on December 28th. Former Syracuse quarterback Greg Paulus has been tabbed as the Purple Eagles interim head coach. This comes after first-year headman Patrick Beeline stepped down earlier today. The Syracuse native spent four years playing basketball at Duke before his time in Orange. He has since served as an assistant coach at Ohio State, Louisville, and George Washington. And over in baseball, the Nationals pummeled the Astros in Game 2 of the World Series, a commanding 12-3 win for Washington. The Nats' offense exploded late in the game. They played at six runs in the seventh inning and added three more in the eighth. Washington now has a 2-0 lead over Houston as the series heads back to the nation's capital. The two teams have tonight off to rest up for Game 3, and first pitch tomorrow night is at 8.07. And back in the Empire State, every New York NHL team is hitting the ice tonight. The Red Hot Sabres are down in the Big Apple to face the Rangers. Buffalo is off to an 8-1-1 start to the season. That's the best record in the league. On the other side, New York is in a rut. After winning their first two games, the Blue Shirts have dropped five in a row. We'll see if they, we'll see if they can break out of it when Puck drops in the Garden at 7. And across town, the Islanders are also in action tonight. They're hosting the Coyotes at Nassau Coliseum, and that game gets underway at 7.
Now, Brandon, a lot of great sports stories there to follow, but it's October, and that means baseball takes precedent. And that seemed to have been pretty dominant so far this series. Do you think they'll be able to sweep? I mean, two games to nothing lead right now, and they took both of those games in Houston. That's big for the Nationals to try to get that sweep, and honestly, they got some momentum. It looks like that's not out of the question, especially since Houston may be one of the best teams in MLB. The Nats might pull it off. All right, Brandon, thank you so much. When we come back, one last look at your weather. Citrus TV returns in 90 seconds. Patriotism. It inspires passionate debate. It's worn like a badge of honor with good reason, because it means love and devotion for one's country. But what really makes up this country of ours? It's the people. To love America is to love all Americans. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love, love beyond age, sexuality, disability, race, religion, and other labels, because love has no labels. They call me Maxi, but I prefer tripod. I was your above average four-legged homie and then wham, bam, minivan. Some people pity me, now that's lame. I still run, fetch, and swim. And the ladies love me, I'm the ultimate wingman. Just don't ask me to high five. Sword throat? He was a little horse. <laughs> Can I tell you a cat joke? Just kidding. <laughs> Why couldn't the pelican? Wait. Why was the basketball court all wet? Why? Because the players kept dribbling all over it. Where did cats go on vacation? New York. <laughs> We're joined once again by weather anchor Sunny Balkan. Now, Sunny, tomorrow, Remembrance Scholars have their rose laying ceremony, two in the afternoon. It is outside. Is that rain going to be there then or later in the day? You know, Gab, I was thinking about this, and I'm happy to tell you that it's not going to be there until later on in the evening. Around 6 p.m. and 7 p.m., we're going to start to see some light showers. But during the afternoon time, we should have just enough cloud coverage and not a, no rain in sight. It's going to be beautiful. It won't be beautiful. There will be clouds, but it'll be great for pictures. So it'll be wonderful. Well, at a minimum, at least we'll have uh, clear skies from the perspective of rain, even if it is a little bit overcast. Exactly. Well, Edward Snowden, American whistleblower who leaked information from the NSA in 2013, has searched U.S. intelligence networks for proof of aliens. Former CIA employee Snowden formerly, uh, reportedly still had access to some of the intelligence network servers and did some research into the existence of extraterrestrial life, but he found no results. The reports that the U.S. is not aware of any intelligent life outside our Earth and has never been contacted by such. Snowden looked into other conspiracy theories and he writes in his recent book, Yes, man really did land on the moon, climate change is real, and chemtrails are not a thing. All right, well, we welcome back our alien panel, which of uh, we, of course, <laughs> of course, had on during the Area 51, you know, raid, or so-called raid as it ended up being. Thankfully, it was much safer than that. Guys, what do we think about his claims? I think that they are false. I definitely what? think that we have had contact with, with aliens. I think uh, this man, Edward Snowden, he obviously knows the real answer, but it's it's far too controversial to ever put into a book. Also, but nobody's going to read a book. to the information. He so did. I, I think he would tell the truth. He stole the truth about a lot of so his other things that people think he shouldn't have. He right. has had a good track record. So you're telling say. me he's whistleblown before, but he right. won't whistleblow about this. Is that what you're saying? It's possible that the aliens may have contacted contacted him, they made it said, hey, Edward, maybe keep this on the down low. I would just think, as, as impressive as his hacking skills clearly are, I think that if we have information that sensitive, it's behind a layer that even he can't You think crack. that's more right. sensitive right. than Absolutely. anything else? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. I, have to I mean, that does make sense right. to an extent. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, we're going to have to leave it there. That's all the time we have for you today on Citrus TV News. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter for all of us here. I'm Connor White. And I'm Gabrielle Caracciolo. Have a great night, Syracuse. <laughs>